In this video, guys, we're going to look at a different way to trade with trend lines. Stay tuned. Hey traders, warm welcome to you. Okay, so trend lines are a pretty solid staple in many traders' trading playbooks, setups, arsenal. And for good reason, because if you align yourself with the trend, then at least you're giving yourself the best possible chance of making a winning trade. The trouble with trend lines is that this all looks very nice when we put it on the board here. We get a whiteboard up, we look at textbooks, and they say, yep, yeah, we buy here, we buy here, we sell here, we sell here. And that looks very nice in theory. But if you've traded, you'll know that trend lines very rarely look like that. And good plans of to buy on the bottom of the trend are often scuppered because the market is noisy here, it breaks through, it doesn't quite touch it. You often get half pullbacks up and then pushes down. That's just tr trading, right? The market's just trading supply demand. Yes, they may still be in that nice trend line, whether we've just got one trend line going up or whether we've got a channel like this, but there's not necessarily gonna be clean moves from one point to one point. So how do you overcome that? How do you get past that challenge and say, well, I want to align myself with the trend. I obviously want to be going long here. Now, just digressing slightly, we do talk about going short on the top and we have done a video on this before. I always say, hey, listen, that's probably best left alone. Yes, they can see there's opportunity there, but you're better off aligning yourself with the trend. It gives you less cognitive load. I'm only looking for longs. It means that you're trading less. It means that you're not trying to flip from short to long. You'll say, hey, I've got a bullish thesis on this. I just need to find an entry. So that's what we're going to focus on today in this video. So we're looking for a long entry in this uptrend. And we kind of say, okay, well, most of the time when we get to this kind of low point here, you can imagine this is kind of what it looks like, right? It comes down, it's chopping about, it might do this, it might go lower, and then it eventually goes off. And that might be over a period of a couple of days, a couple of weeks, or if you're on an intraday chart, maybe it's a few hours. And it's frustrating, okay? Because you're in the trade, um, it might stop you out because it pops below, then it does. And you can't really tell what this is gonna do, obviously. But another way of doing it is to create a structure and a plan around the actual thesis that this will happen. So if it's going to happen, let me be prepared to miss something, but only get the very, very sweetest trade. So this is how we do it. We measure the distance between the upper trend line and the lower trend line. And let's say, for example, if we're talking currencies, that's 500 pips. Obviously, it can depend if an intraday chart or a swing ch uh, daily chart or a weekly chart, whatever. But let's just say for argument's sake, it's 500 pips. So we know that the middle of it is approximately going to be 250 pips. So we've got our center point here. Now, generally speaking, and I'm really generalizing here, but we've got to kind of make some general rules for trading because I think the danger we have with trading is trying to fit everything in. We've got to generalize and say, well, this is the normal distribution curve of what normally happens. Let's work within that and let's try and capitalize on that. And normally speaking, we are not going to penetrate below that lower point by more than half of the distance between the trend lines, so the center channel, if you like. So we're unlikely to go 250 pips uh, down here in this case, in this example. So 500 pips divided by two, our center point is 250 pips. We're unlikely to go there. So we can frame our trade around this. Now, if we make the assumption that we're going to get small breaks through that low, then our thesis should be, okay, we want to be buying when everyone else thinks the trend line has broken. Because this might sound counterintuitive. You might say, well, you know, the textbooks say when it breaks, we go short. And yes, you know, that that is a, a strategy. But we want to align ourselves with the trend. We want to give the trend the benefit of the doubt. Now, if we're going short, we've been, again, we've kind of discussed this before, and if you guys are subscribed, you've probably seen the video, and by the way, do appreciate your support and subscription. We come down, we then look for a different pullback, a different scenario if we're, if we're taking a short on an uptrend. But we've got to assume that if we're staying with the trend, give the trend the benefit of the doubt. Let it test lows, let it fool a few people, and then we want to be buying into that kind of test, if we like, because yes, it might seem as if we're buying when the trend line is broken, but all we're doing is maximizing our risk reward. Let me explain what I mean. So as we come through this low here, let's use this as an example here. We come through this low, we can structure our trade and say, let's split this into tenths. So 500 pips, we know that's our ultimate stop loss point. And by the way, I should probably make that clear. That's our ultimate, hey, we don't want to trade this anymore point. But we've got this zone where we're happy to take the trade. And now, listen, you can adjust it for your own trend line. You can say, okay, 
you know, I don't need to be that far out or, or just play around. Just generalizing here for this example. But that's our maximum area where we don't want to be start taking longs anymore. And you can see why if we start messing around down there, then pretty clearly the trend line is likely to not hold any longer. However, if we're doing business under that trend line, but still within that zone, we're looking to purchase this on a long position, hoping for a push back up. So we can then split this up into tents and say, okay, we've got 50 pips is, is um, intense and what we can now do is look to buy at one tenth or two tenth under that trend line two tenths under that trend line so we can go 50 pips below 100 pips below our ultimate stop is 250 pips or whatever that may be so we can start to use this to our advantage assume we're going to get this kind of grubby nature assume that might be 50 pips below that might be 100 pips below we can scale into the trade we've got an ultimate stop loss now the point of this is now that might be too wide. You might say, okay, well, I don't want to go in 50 pips and give a 200 pip stop loss. But bearing in mind, if that's 500 pips to the upside and you're in 50 pips, well, you've got 550 pips of target. Already the risk reward ratio is looking a little bit better. If you start taking it 100 pips lower, you've got 600 pips of target and you've got 150 pips of stop. So you, you're looking quite good at risk reward anyway. But the point is you're waiting until you see this, you're structuring the trade plan to get in under the trend line only when it's at the sweet spot. Because not only as you see the risk reward ratio becomes extremely nice for you because you've still got that target of the upper trend line there, but you're playing a game where you haven't got to sit through heat because most people will buy this trend line here, buy the tag of that trend line, and then it'll mess around, do all this, and they'll get frustrated with it because you're underwater, you're underwater 50 pips, 70 pips, whatever it may be, and you end up ditching the trade, then eventually it will go. If you're waiting until trend line buyers are underwater and then buying, this little flurry here is probably then giving up, the, throwing in the towel. If you can take the other side of that deal and start to buy there, yes, you've got the chance of it stopping up, of course you have with trades, but it gives you that extra edge in. And if you like, you can then you know, look for that extended target. And if you're really looking for like, potential breakouts, which often happen after they've tested below this low, you often get a breakout to the high here, then your risk reward ratio is looking very, very favorable, like 10 to one kind of stuff. Um, because it's had that probe there, hasn't broken through, su sucked out a load of uh, buyers, sucked in a load of shorts, and then that short covering causes it to actually break through the upper that trend line. So your risk reward ratio is quite nice. So into recap, guys, we, we, we measure the distance between the upper trend line and lower trend line divided by 10. And we, when we put the lower trend line in chunks of 10, so in this case, it's 50 pips, 50 pips, 50 pips. We're looking to buy when we're at one tenth under, two tenths under. Yes, we can adjust this in scale if you want to do more. Our ultimate stop loss is going to be half of that width. Adjust your position size to suit. Don't forget the risk management on that criteria. And then we're looking to scale out as we come and tag the upper trend line there. So it's just a different way of, of doing it. The disadvantage, of course, is you're gonna get far less signals. It could go up and chug for a very long time um, and you won't get a signal. But the advantage is it puts you on the right side of A, the trend, B, the sweet spot of where the trend could turn, and you're taking the opposite side of retail who are probably trading it textbook style and are coming out, especially if it's loitering, hanging around under that trend line for a while. Uh, and also the further on, the more likely people think it's gonna roll over. So you've had a trend line, it's come in place, it starts to do business under that lower trend line. People think it's gonna roll over, they get on that. Then when it turns, and of course it could roll over, that's what you stops there for, but if it turns, then you've got a really good risk reward ratio. Everyone jumps on it and gives you that extra boost. And quite often that final kind of blast to the upside that often takes out the upper trend line is quite strong and quite quick. So you get paid quite quickly on the trade. Anyway guys, that's a different way to trade uh, with trend lines. If you like this video, thumbs up, appreciate it. See you next one, take care, bye-bye.